Listen. So I've talked about how these types of movies have pretty much become their own genre in 2018. Like, even when you go to film festivals, they group them all together and they themselves kind of pitch it all as one. But for every one of them that's actually crafted well and is able to get their message across successfully, there's others that think that just by saying um, racism bad, that that automatically makes them good movies. It doesn't. So I was curious about this one because it had the talent behind it, right? The story can obviously be very compelling, but... Looking at the trailers, it also seemed like it was just going to be another episode of Degrassi just on the big screen. But once I saw George Tillman was directing it, I knew, I felt that it would dive into what it needed to since he had made movies like Soul Food, Notorious, Luke Cage, and of course, The Longest Ride. Hey! Keep it. In all honesty, uh, I give this one a junior price because of how well Star's character was developed. I'm not saying that every aspect hits home. There's there's three really cringy scenes that I'm going to be talking about. But for those of you who like things like On My Block or the show 7 Seconds, which also has Isaiah Butler, then you're going to want to watch this one because it surprised me. Let me explain. So this movie is based off of a novel that expands on Tupac's acronym of Thug Life. That the reason so much chaos happens in certain places is because people grow up automatically having so much hate in their hearts for things that have been done to them. That's why Star and her siblings get sent to a preppy school since their mom Regina wants them to roam the nicer halls even if they don't always fit in. That's why the colors shift in every scene so every time she's back home everything's super warm while when she's away and she's in the preppy school it's bluer than Eiffel 65 and that's because all of the kids who she meets there are allowed to speak slang to her and they think it comes off as cool but she knows at the moment that she does it they're all gonna think that she's too hood. Williamson Star doesn't give anyone a reason to call her ghetto. And and I hate myself for doing it. It's like when twerking was never broadcast for the same reason, but then, you know, Miley did it and we couldn't escape it. You don't get the best of both worlds, Hannah. Star, however, is trying to do that because she starts dating Archie from Riverdale, who's as white as can be, but since both of them watch sneaker shopping on Complex, they, they kind of have a connection. Everything starts to fall apart, however, when the incident happens. Growing up, Star had two best friends who all pretended to be wizards since they were obsessed with Harry Potter. Love the series the same. Definitely have seen each one twice. But the thing is, is that when one of them got shot in a drive-by, that started breaking their bond, especially considering that Star's dad was mixed in with the people who did it, and they even told her that she wasn't allowed to snitch at all. Hence the acronym. Years later, she reconnects with Khalil at a party, and this dude is as smooth as can be. Like, their friendship just picks up like nothing. Years can pass by and they're okay. And this man even goes in for a kiss, and she goes, whoa, whoa, whoa I got a boyfriend. And he's like, soccer's got a goalie. Don't mean I can't score. And she felt that. Obviously, things don't end well when he gets pulled over just because he reached for a comb. And that's where the movie really started surprising me, specifically Amanda Stenberg's performance. Like, I've seen her as Rue, right? I saw her in that Darkest Minds movie that wasn't for me. And everything, everything I've seen her in, I had no clue she had these acting chops on her. There were scenes that reminded me of Alex in Hereditary, if you know what I'm talking about. Like, just the way she reacted to the entire incident, I thought was way more impactful than some other movies who try to cover it from the outside. But you had her waking up from night terrors. She was puking like days after the incident had happened but as much as I loved her performance that doesn't mean there wasn't some cringy scenes right Common who's in this movie and he's playing the uncle who is also a police officer pretty much acted like that super Christian kid who has to play Satan in the church play you know he really doesn't want to do it so he like says all of his lines with his fingers crossed behind him there's a scene between him and his niece who's asking him these questions and in the movie Monsters and Men which I love they have a scene like that and they do a fantastic job with it However, in this one, Common said things that were clearly just bait to make him look dumb. In another one, there's this lady right here who, I'm not even going to repeat the dumb line she said. You'll know it when you see it. But then there's a little Tumblr scuffle that happens between her and her friend who unfollows her because she believes that the cop is innocent and Khalil would have died anyways. And look, Sabrina Carpenter might have starred in Girl Meets World. But this girl hasn't seen any of it since she's too caught up in her own. Later on in the movie, there's a scene where the preppy school treats the march for Khalil as a day to play hooky and they all pretend to care about him just so they can, you know, skip the exams they needed to take that day. And ironically, the movie plays logic in the background. But it's all that buildup that causes Star to appear as the star witness and testify against the cop, which only rises tensions from the police, the local gang, and her boyfriend who, you know, 
After that limo talk, he's actually a pretty good dude. By the end, the cop doesn't get indicted, but the movie climaxes in a scene that I personally don't believe would have ended as peacefully in real life, but... I get what they were going for. At that point, the local gang and the dad go up in arms and right before they're about to shoot each other, it turns out that the little brother pulled a crash and he's the one who took the dad's gun and then the cops pull up on the little kid. Again, the acronym. Somehow things end peacefully in that scene, which was probably the biggest miracle that could have happened and everyone is able to settle down and continue living. Again, I think these right here are movies that do a fantastic job at covering subjects like this. But I was surprised that this one was able to deliver it well in my opinion. There have been a lot of other movies that have covered this, there's going to be a lot more that are going to come out, and I'm always here to support the good ones, but I'll always stand by the fact that a group shouldn't be defined by these tragically sad movies. It's just, whenever they do make a good one, a happy one, Others get upset they love it. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comments section. I was surprised at how many things I was reading that people didn't even want to see this movie, which is, you know, it's it's fine. It's still a, even if it has an important message, uh, the movie may not deliver to you acting wise and all that stuff. That's why I was surprised with it, but people walking out because they didn't want to, I guess, watch the movie. I liked that. I thought the part with the wand where it turns out he did have the wand the whole time, that one hit home. I One of the, my favorite lines in it was when he, when she says that she isn't going to be star version 2.0, she's just going to be star because it's like, for real, you know, you don't need to restart since your past makes you. I personally liked the movie. I thought it was pretty good. Again, I highly recommend movies like Monsters and Men. Uh, there was also the documentary Crime and Punishment that I think are pretty good, but you know, I'm curious to know your thoughts. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe down below, and I'll send you a fresh pair of J's.